I. By the way, if you've seen with this jumper, I've been tinkering around. This is my tinkering around jump. I like it because the sleeves are too short and they don't get in the way when I'm mucking about with things and it still keeps me warm. Right, okay. Today I'm going to be talking about phono attenuation leads or phono attenuator, if I can say the word that is. And what's it do? Do you need to get one? Is it worth thinking about? And I'm going to show you how to make one at the second part of this video. Okay. Um, let's just give you a quick story. When I was before I was just started the channel, uh, I got all my bits and pieces together. I thought I'd do a, a channel of this audio um, because I can do a little bit of tinkering around as well, try and change it, muck it about a bit, try and make it a little bit different, maybe some other people. You know, I don't want to copy everyone, so to speak, I'm trying to make it my own. Um, I knew I needed to get a phono lead with an attenuator in it because all these old amps, and I've you know, read up about it, and I knew myself anyway. They probably need an attenuation, attenuation, because the output of these CD players, uh, obviously I'm using vinyl as well, but the output of these CD players is is too high uh, on most occasions. So um, as the sound comes out of here from the uh, from the rear from the phono sockets into your amplifier, your preamp or whatever, it's too loud. I mean this can be the same with a new amplifier as well. It's not just old amplifiers. I mean you have a MP3 player or a, a DAC or, or something like that. That the output's too high, so you may be considering getting some phono and attenuators, which range, they're about £30, I would have said, something like that, $30 on the internet, and it's quite a few different types, different values, and all made up differently inside, you know, what I can see is quite a few different ones about, you know, it works for some people, and it don't work for others, but then one may work for someone, or not work for someone else, and vice versa, so it could take you a few attempts before you get the one that's right for you, so making your own, would make you know then few attempts would be a lot less you know you can make your own just swap a few resistors about and maybe get it fine-tuned to how you want it now I'm, I'm, before i start i'm no expert because a lot of this depends on your impedance of your amplifier and your impedance of your cd player your, whatever you're connecting your mp3 player whatever uh, so i'm no expert in that so i won't try and tell you about it because i'm going to slip up and say something wrong it'd be a waste of time so maybe read up about it on the internet have a good read if you can understand it or whatever. You know, people understand it a lot more than me probably, maybe some people won't. But all I can say is the leads I've made, I made two now, one, one or what I say about six months ago, and one literally very recently this week. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how to make that lead yourself. But all I can say is both these leads work for me and they both sound better. I can honestly say they both sound better than a direct feed, you know, just a normal cable from here to any of the amps really. Um, they sound better. And the, 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 at the two I made, I'm still going to stick to the original one, the old one, but I'm going to make that a bit better. Now I've got another lead to muck about with some connectors. I shall shrink that down because it's a bit of a bit of a quick bunch job. I didn't have the right size resistors in that at the time. Okay, how will you know that it's you know something you may consider or think about? And what I can say is really is if you think you've got the volume quite low, but you're getting quite a lot of volume there because compared to maybe your tuner your tape deck going into it, your MP3 player, any, any other device you've got plugged in apart from one device, and that one seems to be maybe one and a half times, two times louder at a certain volume than the others. Then you may think, oh, and you've not got a lot of control over it. Then you just turn the volume up and, oh, yes, I can't get the volume any further than that. It's, it's unbearable, so to speak. I found that, like I say, just connecting the normal lead, and, and I found this sound to be muddy, uh, kind of like muffled and muddy, um, like I think you know the higher volumes are interfering with the lower volumes. I think you now what happens the kind of volume clips at the top and comes back down on itself. It's kind of like just getting distorted a little bit. I mean, it's not bad, you know what I mean. But it's definitely a difference between not having these leads and having these leads. You know what I mean? That, that there is a difference for me. There's a difference for a lot, a lot of people. I think, you know, it's, I think you no, know, some of these things are up in the air as far as I'm concerned. But I can definitely say I can definitely hear a difference this time. What will you need to make one of these leads? You're thinking about making one up yourself rather than buying one as they're quite expensive. Well, you have to get yourself a phono cable, a phono lead cable, which I did. This, this is one that I, you'll see it in the, uh, in the video afterwards, which I cut in half. So theoretically, I can make up two leads. I've got myself some of these little phono plugs. These are not expensive. The lead was four pound, and these little phono uh, adapters were a pound each. So it's pretty straightforward and cheap. And these ones I used, I'll put a picture up now. As you can see, the middle terminal, the middle pin is actually uh, a screw there holding that. So the wire, where in our case, the resistors 
they'd be going in that screw just makes life a little bit easier so I thought I'd get them one just to make it a little easier than soldering it and uh, you know make it a little bit easier maybe for someone trying to make up themselves but obviously you get one where you solder as well what would you need you need a soldering iron of course uh, but that could be you know eight or ten pound and that's something you could keep and use for other things later on you know? so like for, you know small investment you may already have one I know someone you can you know, borrow one off of and I come up with a circuit but I didn't I went on the internet had a look round and there's tons of them on there tons and tons and tons I just went round with a few people who like mentioned it and said it worked for them and whatever someone that seems to know what he was talking about and uh, I used two like I say one a while back and one I've just seen recently now the first one uh, I'm going I'm to show you this picture up on the screen uh, before I do that actually I just want to say because I forget to mention it somewhere in the video once you made this Lee once you made it you must get it the right way round you can't just plug them two into your amp and them two into the the thing that's too loud your CD player or whatever you've got to get the th this is how the lead come these two pre-connected and these are the two I've added on to the end with the resistors in now these two with the resistors in that we're going to do today these two must go into your amplifier these two are the ones that plug into the back of your amplifier auxiliary or wherever you're going to use in the back of your amp probably auxiliary and these two here go into your CD player your MP3 player whatever it is that's too loud if you get it the wrong way round it's still going to work but it's not going to work as it should so just make sure these are the ones that go into your amplifier the ones you've just attached today okay uh, yeah like i say i've got there and also some resistors mustn't forget bought some resistors now these are metal film resistors quarter watt and they're not expensive they're 10 pence each the trouble is you may have to buy 10 of them uh, so you're gonna have to spend a pound on each one and you need two uh, for the circuit so yeah i'm gonna put up the circuits now now this first pitch at the end is, is is the output from this cd player using my little uh, oscilloscope thing I bought fairly cheap but it, it's fairly accurate I think for what it is but anyway it's going to be good enough for, for me to show you these readings here as you can see it says uh, what I've done is got a 1k test tone I've burnt it to CD 1k test tone and that's what it's playing back and this test tone uh, it's been recorded at normal volume and everything was supposed to be just normal test tone like and it's reading if you can see under trig the VMAX 3.02 volts I think it says there if I can remember rightly or 3.04 something like that that's just a straight connection now the lead I made up earlier about six months ago is supposed to be a 6 db, 6 db reduction I don't know how true it is that's what the bloke said so I've took him on the face value but as you can see it has made a difference it's knocked it down to 1.94 volts so that's the output now with that lead and the lead we're going to make up today is someone else on the internet I've stumbled across or whatever and found this circuit here and uh, he reckons that this knocks it down 10 dB uh, and as you can see now the voltage there under trig uh, the VMAX is 1.17 volts so yeah so we're going to make this lot so it may not be the lead for you but reading like articles and bits and pieces on the internet a lot of people recommending you start off at minus 10 dB or 10 dB however you want to say it this gives you a bit of leeway it's, you know, with the 6 you, you may think oh it's not quite enough and you're stuck with the 10 it's too much a little bit too much but you've got a bit of control on the volume just turn the volume up a little bit so it gives you a little bit more control there so this is the one we're going to make today and the video i want to show you how to do that is coming up now okay so let's make our lead up uh, i bought a lead about four pound off of ebay four dollars something like that looks fairly like thick fairly reasonable um right we're going to cut it in two so it's cut in two so theoretically now we can make two uh, leads up if we wanted to we're only going to do one today so uh yeah we're going, to, we're going to bear the wires using this cutter here i use so i'm going to take the outer sleeving off then i'm actually going to cut the uh the middle uh wire just to uh, pull the sleeving off that so we're down to bare wire i'm going to pre-solder that middle wire now uh so it's ready to uh, attach my resistor to right we're going to get the two resistors and we're going to uh, salt you know kind of put them together bend them around the uh, together there the uh, leads uh then we're going to solder them together and once they're soldered we're just going to snip off the end leave yourself a little bit of uh, end in there but snip off the end tidy them up a bit uh we're going to uh, put these into the connector now we're going to push these in the middle uh, connection of the connector uh, undo the screw and push them in there then screw it up nice and tight we can solder it as well if we want to but it's fine screwed up tight uh the other end of the 4.7k resistor we're going to bend down to the shielding so it's just poking through the uh, shielding hole there and we're going to solder that shortly so at the moment it's just sitting there uh, we're going to cut the other end of the 6.8k resistor off as i've done so there 
and we're going to put a little sleeve like a little sleeve over it uh, another piece of thick you know wire like quite a uh, bigger diameter wire that they're in and go through the resistor can go through it or uh, I use that kind of ink 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 eat uh, resistant eat shrink so say eat shrink cable you know cable kind of thing uh, wrapping or, or you can use a bit of tape or something like that it's just going to come in handy to um, kind of insulate the uh, soldering joint we're going to do in a minute to the uh, other end of this resistor okay so uh, we're going to solder the uh, middle connector of our wire now to that resistor to that 6.8k resistor so that's soldered there maybe a bit awkward to see in this picture but the wire's coming from the bottom of the screen it's black uh, and it's going up and just uh, touching that resistor there hopefully you can see that and we're going to poke the shielding of that cable now through the same hole that we had that uh, uh, 4.7k resistor uh, going through a minute ago the uh, the uh, shielding or ground whatever you want to call it then we're going to solder them together so uh, they're soldered together now and we're just going to trim that so it's sort of the, the case and everything's going to go over it okay don't forget to put the casing on first I meant to mention that uh, with the cable just let's just rewind a little bit uh, when you once you've cut that cable uh, and you bared the wires put put the um, yeah if you just cut the, put the other end of this over the cable otherwise you're going to be stuck with just this and nothing to go over it so as, as you cut that cable um, have I got a bit of cable here that I can quickly show you should have had it planned really is the other end of the cable yeah so you can do it straight away but I, I mean like I say cut it so the cable's cut but make sure you put this over there now then start all the soldering no don't don't do all the soldering then you're left with this sitting on the side so make sure that's over there like that then you do all the soldering so when we finish we can actually push that back on uh, something I forgot to mention there but you probably would have found out maybe after you've uh, soldered it or you may have realized I missed it out anyway okay so that little sleeve we've done we're going to put it in uh, over that resistor that 6.8k resistor we're going to put it forward so it covers up the uh, the, the solder joint we've just done uh, and that's that so now we've got it all together in the uh, connector uh, we're going to put a bit of glue there like a little, little bit of glue there's going to help like um, I, I just use this like all-purpose glue really to be honest with you but it's just going to hold all the wires together in there uh, especially when you're pulling it in and out of the thing you know what I mean um, in and out of different you know, appliances or whatever just be a bit gentle with it anyway but that bit of glue hold it nice and firm and then I'll put the cover on as you can see now I've tightened the cover on and as you can see the cables coming out of the hole uh, the hole is actually a lot bigger than the cable it's not massive but I mean it's a millimeter round or so to speak bigger so I've just topped it up with glue now it's all topped up with glue now uh, so yeah let that dry and that'd be nice and solid so if we actually pulled the cable it's not going to pull the wire and under all the solder out and whatever so um, yeah that's it so um, yeah we've made our cable there like I say that, that, that's for this particular cable um, the resistors and that I've used is for the uh, 10db one uh, like I say I've used the 10db one but I just found it a bit too low for me it's just a bit too low I do prefer the uh, the other one the, the uh, 6 db one this kind of thing this mess I've made earlier but now I've got a lead and everything and I've come around to doing it and put it up on the channel I'll knock myself up the proper one a bit like an electrician's house when he's got all the uh, plug sockets hanging off the wall or plaster's house and he's got all cracks and you know, bits of plaster missing around his house so I'll eventually get around to doing my own stuff okay so that's it so um yeah let us know how you go with that lead it'd be interesting to hear uh, other people but i'll definitely like I, I said earlier i'll definitely uh think i can hear the benefit well i don't think i know i can hear the benefit this time there's no two ways about it of, of actually using it and I, I much prefer using that lead now that's for certain okay to the next video i'll see you all soon